Hi viewers, welcome to Brain Blitz Audios. Today, we're looking at the chapter, Human Eye and Colorful World. This is the 11th chapter in the science syllabus for grade 10 CBSE. Let's begin. In order to fast track the learning of this chapter, we've decided to use a mind map. Mind maps are great for revisions during last minute preparation. Now, there are five portions, I mean six portions in this mind map. They are structure of eye, eye defects, refraction of light through prism, dispersion of light, atmospheric refraction, and scattering of light. Now, all of these are important topics of the chapter human eye and colorful world and we will proceed using the number sequence given let's begin shall we okay so firstly we're going to be looking at the human eye it is one of the most important sense organs that we have and it enables us to see objects detection of color is almost impossible without human eye. Now let's look at the structure of this great sense organ. Our eye contains a cornea, which enables us to refract light passing through our eyes. This is the cornea. It accounts for most of the refraction of the light rays. Now beyond the cornea, we have some space filled by a fluid called as aqueous humor. The muscular part of the eye, which helps us in controlling the pupil, is known as iris. Now, this is the part where you see color such as blue, green, black, etc. It controls the amount of light that is let in by the pupil. The pupil is the hole through which light rays pass through. And the expansion and contraction of the pupil by the iris helps us to regulate the amount of light entry. Further refraction is done by this part, the crystalline lens. It is attached to a pair of ciliary muscles which stretch and contract it as required. The retina in the eye absorbs the, the light rays and creates an image which is transported by the optic nerve. To create the whole structure stable, vitreous humor is filled in between the lens and the retina. Now this is all that we need to know about the structure of the eye. Let's move on. From structure of the eye, we move on to the defects of the eye. Now in this case, we'll be looking at defects due to refraction, which causes problems such as nearsightedness and farsightedness. Nearsightedness or myopia is caused by the excessive curvature of eye lens or the elongation of the eyeball. Essentially, the far point of the human eye's lens, which usually is infinity, has now been reduced. See. So when light rays come from infinity and pass through the human lens, it converges at a point which is in front of the retina, thus unable to produce an image on the retina. Now, we use concave lens of appropriate power to mitigate this effect. The reason why is that concave lens are diverging. They diverge the ray of light that passes from infinity to that point so that the the far the light coming from infinity is assumed to be coming from the far point now this is due to the focus and other parts of the concave lens which we have studied in the last chapter now nearsightedness is when we see things that are near to us but we can't see what's far suppose the problem is the exact opposite what if you can see stuff far away, but you can't see stuff out near to you. 
This is known as farsightedness or hypermetropia. In the diagrams shown, we can see that the normal near point for the human lens, which usually is 25 centimeters from the eye, has now gone farther than that, thus making it difficult for us to see nearby objects. When light rays does emanate from the near point, they form an image behind the retina, again, which is not sensed. Using a convex lens of appropriate power helps us to mitigate the causes of hypermetropia, such as the focal length of the eye lens becoming too long or the eyeball becoming too small. Now, convex lens is converging. Therefore, it helps us to mitigate hypermetropia. Now, this is convex and it's converging. Now, the third type of eye defect is known as presbyopia. This is caused by gradual weakening of ciliary muscles or the dimin diminishing flexibility of eye lens. This makes it hard for a human eye to focus either way, resulting in both myopia and hypermetropia. Therefore, we use bifocal lens to mitigate this effect. Bifocal lens. Moving on from eye defects to refraction of light through a prism. Now, essentially, we've completed the part human eye, and now we're moving to the next phase, colorful world. Now, when we are looking at refraction of light through a prism, it helps us to look at a few strategic terms. In the image given below, the line segment PE represents the incident ray on a prism. Now, the prism used here is a triangular prism, which has two triangular faces and three rectangular faces. Moving on. The ray EF inside the prism is called refracted ray as it undergoes refraction between the air and the glass surface. FS is the emergent ray which comes out of the prism into the open air again, which again is refracted. Now there are some angles given here. The angle A represented here is known as the angle of prism. The angle of incidence is shown here as I, and the angle E is shown as the angle of emergence. R represents the angle of refraction, and D represents the angle of deviation. Now, the angle of deviation is the angle between the original incident ray expanded and the original ray of emergence, original emergent ray expanded. So when you extend both of them, they meet at a point and create an angle known as the angle of deviation. Now, the important formula here to note is that the angle of incidence plus the angle of emergence would be equal to the angle of prism plus the angle of deviation. When you add angle A and angle D, you would get the same sum as adding angle I and angle E. And that's all you need to know about refraction of light through a prism. Let's move on to dispersion of light. Dispersion of light, where the rays of light become visible to humans like this, is found in colloids. Colloids are a form of heterogeneous mixtures which, uh, which contain particles which are not completely soluble, but then they haven't become, but then they cannot be separated by physical methods, such as filtration. These colloids are very popular. Some of the colloids include milk, blood, etc. Now let's look at the physics behind this. In dispersion of light, when light rays travel through a colloid, they 
they are visible as light rays like this one now this effect of light rays being visible is known as the tyndall effect now more about colloids colloids have two parts dispersed phase and dispersed medium both of these can be solid liquid or gas depends on the type of colloid that's used dispersion of light also can lead to the splitting of white light into seven colors this diagram here shows newton's experiment on the on the separation of white light into seven colors newton found that when using two prisms inverted upon each other the white light first separates and then recombines back into the same this is a useful example of dispersion of light now let's move on towards atmospheric refraction another important phenomena in nature now atmospheric refraction refers to the refraction of light by the earth's atmosphere the earth's atmosphere is a fluid in physics therefore it refracts light because light coming from space has a different speed from the light present in the earth's atmosphere therefore slight refraction takes place now due to the refraction by the earth's atmosphere a couple of interesting phenomena occur the first is the twinkling of stars if you've seen the night sky you would know that stars sometimes appear brighter and sometimes darker the reason for this being that stars are very far away they are considered as a point object therefore when light rays from the star are refracted by the earth's atmosphere it changes the the apparent position of the star to our eyes this change in apparent position on a point object makes the apparent brightness and darkness change of the star thereby appearing thereby making it appear to us that the star is twinkling now this is true for stars but why not for planets they are small objects too to us but they do not twinkle the reason being is that stars are very far away and they are considered as point objects while planets are a lot closer and they are extended objects and that's the reason why stars twinkle now let's move on to the next phenomenon advanced sunrise and delayed sunset most of you do not know this but the time of sunrise and sunset is actually 4 minutes larger than the actual time this is due to the refraction of sunlight of the sun when it's below the horizon when 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 the sun is close to the horizon but below it light rays refracted to our eyes assume that the sun is actually risen where in fact it has not even crossed the horizon therefore sun sunrise happens 2 minutes earlier than actual and sunset happens 2 minutes later then what actually happens thereby giving us 4 minutes extra of time of sunlight now let's move on to the final topic scattering of light now what happens in scattering of light there are many particles in the earth's atmosphere when a light ray strikes one of these it gets scattered and it starts bouncing between the particles now scattering of light is dependent on the size of the particles if the particle is extremely small it only scatters short wavelengths when the particle is larger it scatters longer wavelengths of light now this phenomena has helped us 
in two of the most wonderful things that we have seen in nature blue color of the sky and reddishness of the sun at sunrise and sunset now when sunlight passes through the earth's atmosphere the tiny particles in the earth's atmosphere scatter the short wavelength and our eyes are much sensitive to blue than violet therefore the sky appears blue to us now when the sun is at sunrise or sunset the, the light from the sun has to pass through a longer distance therefore it undergoes more scattering the light which is not scattered is of longer wavelength thereby the sun appears to us as red or orange now this diagram here shows the scattering of light when a light source is shined through a colloid particles scatter the light the white light scattered shows blue color in the colloid solution and the the light with longer wavelengths such as yellow orange and red appears on the screen and that's all you need to know about human eye and colorful world before we end though here's a flow chart to summarize the structure of the eye first up is the cornea which provides the refraction for light rays entering the eye the iris controls the size of the pupil which controls the amount of light entering into the eyes the ciliary muscles helps in regulating the size of the lens now instead of pupil this is lens the crystalline lens the eye lens focuses incoming light rays on the retina the retina helps us in the helps us in the formation of an image the image formed is inverted but our brain interprets it and makes it correct the aqueous humor which is present between the crystalline lens and the cornea provides nutrition to the eye tissues of the cornea and the sclera while the vitreous humor helps to keep the retina in place by pressing it against the choroid of the eye therefore it helps in stabilizing the parts of the eye and that's all folks we hope you enjoyed the the revision of this lesson now brain blitz audios is known for creating quality content such as mind maps stories poems etc we have a vision of providing education to all if you like to be a part of our journey please subscribe to our channel and that's all for today we hope you enjoyed this video until next time